Dear friends, welcome to our space, the meditation for the common good. We continue working with the energy of Aquarius, coming today in the first day of the new moon and in the first day of the new year in accordance with the Chinese calendar or wider than China, the celebration of the new year. And so we join in today this celebration. Holding in our focus, the topic of our Aquarius cycle, the Aquarian world group, sharing on all levels aligned with the plan. We started our work on this topic at the time of the Aquarius Solar Festival, invoking as a group the vision of the plan and asking for the hierarchical guidance. We've been holding this topic in our group field since then, sharing our impressions and bringing seeds that could become thought forms to be magnetized and radiated through our joint focused meditation at this time of the new moon. And this is the purpose of our work today. So let us start. And I invite Birgit to sound the statement of purpose as it was perceived by our group through joint invocative meditation last year. Over to you, Birgit. Thank you and greetings all. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of the common good, freedom and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and share diversity of perspectives in our group creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an ashramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. And over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Bergie. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, we are now going to join in the naming circle, which unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to the telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group feed transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle 
starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. This is Alexander. And uh, Katya Kaufman. Calling in from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. Birgitta. Birgitta Rasmussen calling in from Denmark. Welcome. Judy. Hello, this is Judy Harrison calling in from Brewster, Massachusetts, uh, USA. Welcome. Jill. Hello, everyone. This is Jill from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Kiki. Hello, it's Kiki Bill calling in from London, England. Thank you. Welcome. Martine. Hello, this is Martin calling in from Belgium, Châtelet. Welcome. Anetta. Annette has consistent problem with the microphone, but Annette joining us from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. John. Hello, this is John Sutterby joining from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome. Beverly. Beverly, please unmute yourself. She might be having problems with her microphone also. Welcome, Beverly. Maureen. Maureen, please unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Maureen. Helene. Hello, this is Helen from Jerusalem, Israel. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is Helen from uh, near London in, in the UK. I'm on a rather dodgy phone, so I hope it uh, holds together. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Welcome. Andrea. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea, and I am calling today from Florida. In the United States. Oh. 
Welcome. Barclay. Hello. Hello, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I finally found my unmute button. This is Maureen Barrera from San Diego, California, USA. Excellent. Welcome, Maureen. Barclay. Hello, I am Barclay calling from Mexico, Querétaro, Mexico. Good day. Welcome. So I'm going to walk you through how I um, um, thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you, friends. As I said, for the last uh, two weeks, we've been holding the focus on our topic and reflected on the questions that Judy offered to us uh, in our full moon meditation. We start, uh, we continue our work today by opening the space for continuous sharing, offering into the group Chalice, our group altar, the most resonant ideas that we perceived through our reflection and through conversation in our circle and maybe outside of our circle. And as we share, let us listen to each other and meditatively trying to recognize the most resonant ideas that each of us will have an opportunity to offer for magnetization and radiation through our meditation at the end of our meeting. You can see on the screen the questions that help us to go through our meditative reflecting process. They don't limit the scope of the larger topic of uh, Aquarian sharing on different levels. So we open the floor now. And when you're ready to share, please unmute yourself. So let us begin. And if by any reason you don't you cannot see or read the text on the screen, just let us know about it and we voice those questions.
So I think that I'll take number two for the time being, abolishing obstructions and sharing the light of plan, the planet with humanity. I believe this, this will take place over degrees. And it's more of that kind of understanding of the, the evidence of, of good by the plan. And so obviously we've been involved in this in a number of years. So there, there's an innate knowing that occurs as, as we've seen the work with the masters and, and, and hierarchy and just the overall group work. We, we've seen the, the fruits of this unfold over time. And I think our involvement has grown over time as a result of that. And I, I think it's going to be the same with humanity. And so there, there may be objections at first because pe people generally don't like change especially if it happens on a, a rapid scale and it it um and it it challenges fundamental beliefs and ways of doing business that have been entrenched for a long time but i i think as this happens as this, as the plan unfolds gradually in the beginning stages and people witness an improvement in their lives and in the lives of others then that you know it may shake those foundations kind of just in their own their own being and in their own way and say you know then, then the question comes up and say well may, maybe maybe i should be open to new things and, and new things arising and so then i think it all starts in a way mentally or, or, or people see the evidence in a way but then it kind of that reflection starts happening and then the obstructions begin um dissolving you know mentally and then you know, obviously, I believe it would just kind of shift through as the the various planes, you know, um, the work begins on the etheric, then mentally, it calls things into questions, and there's emotional shifting, and then evidence physicality. And then this just um, perhaps happens in greater increasing spirals in terms of, you know, impact and, and time. Thank you. I was thinking the same thing this past week as John was just saying, uh, noticing these last few weeks, he hearing people speaking or reading in the paper where there's compromise where people are trying to listen and understand what the issues are. And they're trying to accommodate the situation or themselves for the greater good of the whole. And I've, actually felt moments of minor relation as I read these things and I've heard them at different meetings. And I'm thinking, well, it does work. Of course, I mean, of course it works. We all know that, but it is getting out there and people, it seems maybe little by little people are listening and are trying to compromise and work together. Thank you. I can't help but think of what was just said by Kiki and John both. Um, and it just is perfect evidence of fourth ray energy with, uh, you know, art and harmony through conflict and the resolution through that. So um, I do think humanity is working through this. Just, I don't know how uh, as perfectly as it, it is via the fourth ray. So it's kind of nice evidence seeing some positive things coming out of the the craziness and chaos, but a lot of times that, I mean, that's just fourth ray energy. So thank you for bringing Something that came to mind in speaking of the fourth ray in, in harmony, it's something I've I've read recently a lot about how harmony within oneself allows the, the light of the presence or, or the monadic light in our language to flood forth in increasing measure. And so this this has a couple of different results. It is one, 
the greater the monotic light that flows within your being and it, it impacts your environment to greater degrees with less effort and less time. So it takes a lot less effort and time to carry out a certain objective that you've perhaps been doing over time. And there's efficiencies that, and just that harmonization increases over time. And I, th I think that's, that's part of this benefit of that is that, you know, I hadn't made that connection before that, but that fourth ray energy is that the more that comes into manifestation, more automatic dissolving will happen. And as, as there's more, as people are increasingly in touch with their soul and ultimately monotic energy, it will, things will sort of in a way automatically write themselves and it'll, it'll happen. You know, it, it's like um, in the scriptures where it's written, where it happens in the blink of an eye for a flash, you know, one minute it's, it's discordant and the next it's harmonious, but you, you never know when the appointed hour is. And I, I think that this is a major benefit of the, say the, that, that fourth ray, um, and just harmony in general it's that once you've experienced it even even a, a brief glimpse of that then you know it's there by direct experience and you'll want more of it whether whether you know it or not you'll automatically in a way start start moving towards that and saying well, how, how how does that happen and it happens in increasing measurement and measure and then these sort of heavy discordant um conflicting energies begin falling away um you know, in lieu of their opposites, replacing them. Thank you. I'd like just to put in a, a word for um, rhythm as well as harmony. I seem to have been reading quite a lot about rhythm recently in the books. And if we can tune in with the rhythm of the heart of the ashram, I think this too helps in bringing about uh, sharing and right relationship. So, thank you. Hello, it's Lynn again. Um, I might just add once more that um, I, I think that if we, in our consciousness as we do our work, if as often as we can, we include the whole, the whole, the whole earth, um, all the kingdoms in our uh, awareness um, at the various levels, um, we, um, and ask for help when, when it's appropriate. Um, our work becomes even more powerful and more integrated and synthetic. And uh, I, I believe that uh, the devas and so forth in various kingdoms are just waiting to be asked and they can add so much and they need us so much too, to be able to try to do their synthesizing uh, their creative work uh, that they're trying to do. So if we can expand our awareness to be truly inclusive of, of all of this, um, it makes our work even more powerful. Uh, thank you.
Yeah, what was just said by everybody who just spoke, um, it just reminded me of a quantum experiment that was done by late William Tiller, uh, who set up a meditation experiment and had um, people who had meditated a long time. So he was working with people that knew what they were doing as far as meditation. And uh, the experiment was to raise the temperature in a specific room, um, I don't know, a tenth of a degree or something. And um, so what happened was the group would get together and they would all meditate on elevating the temperature a tenth of a degree. And they did this in the same room um, daily for like, I don't know, a few weeks, a week, something like that can't remember the exact amount of time. It wasn't that long, though, honestly. Um, and what ended up happening, because they always had the room set up uh, with uh, equipment, so they knew what the temperature was. Well, it got to a point where their meditation conditioned that room. Again, we're talking about devas and, and, and forces that are unseen that we don't see. Uh, but they literally conditioned the room. So it it became the minute that this group, they walked in and they all sat in together, the temperature immediately went to the point ten tenth of a degree higher than what it was supposed to. Uh, which brings me to what, every, what we were just speaking of, um, you know, energy follows thought, um, a domino effect, you know, uh, right relations creates harmony, which begets more right relations, which begets more harmony. And in the quantum world, again, the devas and the nature spirits and everything are all involved in whatever our thoughts and words and emotions and everything are. So if we're all in one continuum, which we are, it it's like being in that one room. So if you get enough people creating right relations, in the world and in harmony with themselves, with their families, um, in their communities, whatever. I think it's like that hundredth hundredth monkey syndrome where it's that split second. I forget who said that. Um, I think it was John. In the blink of an eye, it just occurs and it just happens. So I think that very much coincides with our our topic of sharing on all levels aligned with the plan. Um, and we know that the plan is right. part of that plan is right relations and harmony. So, um, all this is reminding me of that little ditty. It's something like when there is peace in the family, there is peace in the home. When there is peace in the home, there is peace in the world. I mean, it may go on beyond that. But that's all I remember. The devas and the the other kingdoms of of nature. It's fascinating. I, I was thinking about that in terms of that and um, the monadic consciousness. And it seems like just like soul enfoldment, the monadic consciousness takes time, and it happens by degrees, ju just as the resolutions of these these issues and the spreading of light to humanity happens. It, it seems like it all happens by degrees. Too much, too soon. You know, it could be too much change too fast and you know too little too slow to really do anything but the temperature experiment was interesting because it shows that idea that you might have had to work hard at first to kind of get the temperature up that tenth of a degree but then it just happened automatically now the fascinating thing you know my, my studies and experience is that you work with the the, the other kingdoms and and by, by the way, it's the, the birthright of humanity to, to do these things, you know, educating humanity on that. Hey, there, there are these helpers that are waiting for your call to do constructive, constructive things, call upon them and to kind of witness evidence of that. But in the beginning, it seems like the other kingdoms will hold the balance for you in that way. So that tenth of a degree, that group uh, meditating, if they were to do it on their own. It could happen, but it might take much longer. And then there, there would be that continual slippage of consciousness that we may have all experienced. You know, you get up to the heights of the, the higher heights of the mountain, and then you slip down in some ways, you're pulled down in some way. And my understanding of like the monotic consciousness is as over time as it unfolds, it's permanent. There's there's no slippage. And these kingdoms will help 
hold us in that if, if we keep that harmony within ourselves and are in attunement with them to, you know, especially the devas that will, and the other angelic aspects will, you'll, by your attunement, you'll be held up higher and then eventually it's needed less and less. And so it's interesting by a group perspective that the group serves as a force multiplier too. And so then it, it amplifies that. And so less time and, and more impacts required. And so it's, it's interesting with the temperature in that you, you, they probably could increase their temperature much faster now if they, they wanted to, and then hold that temperature. But it's, it's fascinating the idea that the temperature would automatically self-correct when that group came together and did that. Thank you. Yeah, and it always reminds me of, you know, the old saying, the walls have ears kind of thing. And um, again, it's conditioning the room with the walls, you know, right? The, the energy in the room, just conditioning it. And again, what John was saying, the group work, and we were talking about, um, again, that goes hand in hand with the law of economy. So uh, that also, you know, when we're looking at laws and principles and that type of thing, um, the law of economy comes into effect when you're dealing with groups. And so, yeah, things will happen faster and probably exponentially. The one thing that I've become aware of is that um, everyone is starting to see themselves in uh, in the greater whole. There's a, a greater world awareness. There's a greater understanding of um, nations and how they are interfacing uh, with one another. There's just a larger understanding of oneself in relationship to group. And certainly even within the new group of world servers, there is an understanding that we are part of uh, this greater uh, network of light and love, and that we are connected with a greater network uh, above us. And so with all of the understandings from the bottom to the top, people are starting to see themselves not as just individuals, but part of a greater whole. And that idea forces one to look at relationship and right relationship to make that whole work more effectively. And so um, we can stand as trained observers and take a look at what that looks like as it's unfolding. And it certainly doesn't unfold smoothly. It unfolds in fits and starts and bumps, uh, but it is unfolding the internet and everyone connecting uh, there's a greater connectivity in general, and with that connectivity, we understand that we are not in isolation anymore. We're part of something larger. Um, so that's really what's happening in the Aquarian age. You have all kinds of scientific discoveries, the idea of the quantum. Uh, all of these things are coming at us. And from where we stand um, in terms of world servers, um, we are in a position to support those that are making those kinds of discoveries, humanity basically, to um, be connected to higher energies and to, and to light. It's our job really to bring that through, to support um, the evolution that's happening so that consciousness can start to expand. And so, um, it's both what we see and also uh, what we need to do. And certainly the obstructions are there, the dark forces there, um, people with materialistic view are, are there. Um, and so standing as trained observers, we can also see that as well. And um, I think our work really is to uh, shine a light through it so that we are um, breaking through glamours and illusion uh, as we see it so that uh, soul light can 
really penetrate into humanity as a whole. Thank you. You know, I would just, I'd take that when it's everything that we've been saying, but it's about embodying that light to be those, those, those objective observers, but to suddenly go out into the world of humanity and all the kingdoms on earth and recognize them very actively as our group. And it can be as subtle as walking with a smile and finding eye contact with people instead of looking away. It can be putting your hand on the tree instead of passing it by. It can be speaking to these to all kingdoms aloud. Um, it, it becomes this joyful experience that brings you so into the moment and into the present. And that joy is what draws the Davis. They love it. And I often will sense sense a presence and I just I, I I sense it as the David Kingdom when I am doing anything as simple as gardening and talking <laughs> to each plant as I am pulling it from the ground with apologies or 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 planting it with love and nurturing. But it it, it it, you know, what Judy is saying, which is so true, is that we are much more connected consciously now, and we are all sharing the same experience. And when one goes out into the world, you know, just saying hello to someone in the same way as you'd say good morning to your child or your spouse or a friend, just make it out loud because I think we start to act the plan and that also reverberates in extraordinary ways in ways that I don't think we know but it's that whole concept of pay it forward is that it's amazing what we can teach by example that we wouldn't think needs teaching but it does so thank you It's a very multi-layered topic uh, that we hold this month. And uh, when I think, uh, what does it mean for the world group to share on all the levels? Uh, what comes to my mind is uh, where it's happening organically, it's in a, in a, in an organism, in a human body or any other living being where all these systems are synchronized in harmonious unity each and where each uh, organ uh, has own quality and own function and yet it's part of a wider organism and each of those organs or cells within that organism shares naturally harmoniously on all the levels and so if to take that model or a symbol in uh, and related to the world group and with uh, uh, or more, maybe to be more specific to the esoteric community of the world group, group because it's something that we can relate more directly uh, that's it's it's our community it's it's an ideal that uh, can give us some hints in terms of the direction into which we uh, uh, would want to move um, somehow for me last uh, few months uh, been very resonant the phrase that we all know uh, from the description of the Vesak festival, where uh, it says that the hierarchy gathers uh, behind the Christ in anticipation of the approach of the Buddha. Uh, the hierarchy gathers in geometrical formation. 
And so that phrase, geometrical formation, it's constantly resonates for me. What does it mean? And uh, if to think about it, that's the process that we as the esoteric community are the going through. And uh, the eventually the world group is undergoing through is coming into that geometrical alignment where each part recognizes other parts and shares on all the levels as in the in an organism each cell shares and so then we become that functional unity that can work in alignment with the plan if you think about that a prototype it's it's the hierarchical model and so that's in a way the task for us and uh eventually as i said we can see the same happening within the wider world group first of all with the recognition of the fact of existence of the unity that we call the world group it's not there yet for all those world service for all those individuals working in different fields of practical service the fact of in a unity it's still not that obvious and in a way it's our responsibility of uh, the terror community who uh has a luxury to have the teachings her uh of ageless wisdoms and have knowledge and certain facts to it's our responsibility to share that knowledge and to give that recognition of that inner unity and eventually that hierarchical prototype will extend to this wider group so this is kind of a wider horizon of tasks for us but if we think about this time this next few years this is the work ahead of us we are now in the 2024 the last year of forerunner period of forerunner we're preparing to stand together in 2025 in that geometrical alignment as part of the world group and holding that space for the entire group and pre then preparing for 2026 for the festival week that will culminate the seven year cycle in December 2026. Um, I would like to take that sharing a little bit further. Uh, when we had the last festival week, which was 2019, as esoteric groups, and I'll put the S on it, we stood together and we realized that we were no longer in competition. Um, before that, I think uh, the groups were somewhat isolated. And I won't say there was a conscious, I'm better than you, but there was a work to make our group, whatever our group was, a, a wonderful gr a group, you know, and this was important. And then there was that recognition that we were all doing important work. Where I feel things have moved is to understand that we are all one group working together. Uh, I think we're becoming conscious of it as we involve ourselves with group. We feel our etheric body growing beyond our, our smaller group into the larger group. We cross-pollinate with each other because we bring techniques uh, that have been refined and worked out in various groups that we're part of to other groups that we're part of so that we can be the best serving group that we can be. So it's no longer that we recognize each other, but we are becoming the one that we're talking about. Um, there is a new sense of belonging to the whole. So belonging to the whole in terms of groups, but belonging to the whole in terms of 
um, hierarchy belonging to the whole in terms of humanity, we are really seeing ourselves as part of life unfolding. And in that, we take our place and we also take our responsibility uh, to basically bring forth what I would call a community of order, uh, because that's really where hierarchy is moving. And we're the beginnings of that externalization. So with no glamour, it's understanding through right sharing who we are as a unity and how we move humanity, which is part of the unity that we are, into its better self uh, as we connect with hierarchy because we're part of that too. So we are not only bridging, but we are the bridge. Uh, I've been struck by about uh, three points uh, that have been raised today. Um, the group work we will have to continue and carry forward because eventually there won't only be nations on the earth having to cooperate with each other. With space becoming more interesting and more space travel, it will be planets will have to be cooperative and share. And um, I think there's quite a lot of uh, earthlings who want to go to other planets to uh, pillage them rather than make friends with them. And uh, Andrea, I agree with you about smiling and greeting when you're out and about. I've proved that it improves things immensely. It makes everything when you're out and about more enjoyable. And I also agree that geometric forms will become more and more important in our work. Uh, when I do the EUN meditation every morning, we're asked at one point to check that our group is rightly formed. I, I can't remember the wording at the moment, but I always think, are we geometrically formed correctly around the Christ? And I don't know what that form is, but I'm imagining it as the um, five-pointed star. Thanks. Um, I recently um, got a hold of the uh, pamphlet from Lucius Trust on the 10 C groups. Um, uh, it seems related to what we're talking about. I think having read it, um, it's clarifying. I hadn't really studied the seed groups much at all before. And um, I think it, it kind of gives us, uh, if you want sort of a clear eyed kind of rational view, um, intuitive, but rationally so, um, view of various lines of service. I mean, that little pamphlet is, is a wonderful little thing. And um, I just would recommend it as a sort of clarifying exercise. Um, also, I wanted to just add, I, I looked over um, recently the Findhorn Garden book, and um, one of the, the themes seems to be, that seems to carry through is just like, uh, what sort of beings are you that you, you really believe you're isolated and, you know, you're alone or separate? What is this about? You know, that's from the Day of a Kingdom. Um, and also... Uh, I wanted to just ask, um, I haven't uh, really studied sacred geometry, and I know some of you have, and I'm not sure quite, as you talk about it, um, exactly how, it, how it's used or what you're, what you're con conceptualizing in your minds. Like, the only thing I would know is, like, maybe um, from four to three in the triangles work, or in some of the, in that one invocation and uh, that sort of thing. But, and, and I, you know, in the five pointed star that is involved with the Christ, but I really don't know how these things are used or, or um, um, are you using them in groups, um, visualizing these forms together? I, um, I, I'm just curious about that. It seems really interesting. Thanks.
It's a very good question, and uh, yeah, I. It's the the whole field for uh, exploration and study uh, together. Uh, there are groups who work uh, been working in this field for many years, and pretty much the whole teaching that uh, uh, DK gave uh, through Alice Bailey. It's, pretty much very geometrically based, based on geometry, of geometry of seven rays. And that uh, septenary geometry, in a way, it's a basic uh, model for a hierarchical, st uh, for, for the structure of the hierarchy. We know that there are seven ashrams and that each ashram has seven sub ashrams. And so it's, uh, can give a lot of thought for further exploration and uh, for example the 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 there is a group in italy or it's an international group actually um, uh, tps they work with the this model and so they have very elaborate uh, uh system on that so you have probably had a chance to listen to presentation of Antonella Nobili in the uh, 2025 initiative. Uh, she had several presentations and also I believe last couple of years she's been presenting this uh, at the Seventh Ray Conference. So there are um, different models, different approaches. And on a more uh, practical level, geometry functional geometry that emerges between the groups it's something that we can explore through our practice uh, one example of such uh, practical geometry between groups can be uh, the uh, global silent minutes project that's uh, been focused by the triangle of groups since 2019 and uh, three groups holding uh, the triangle of groups holding that intention and holding the actual uh, flow of this uh, daily activity. And so that's the, the, the geometry of those groups who work as a, a constellation of groups. Uh, so I, I, as I say, it's a big field for our exploration together practical exploration. Geometry is a, a very fascinating subject and, you know, obviously as Alexander was saying, very, very expansive. And it, it seems, you know, it, it works, it, like everything, it works at all layers, levels, and dimensions. And it, it seems like depending on what you're wanting to do, either individually or as a group, you can you could form that geometry, whether it's um, drawing it on a piece of paper or individually holding it within your mind's eye and consciousness or forming your group in that way. You know, and the, these geometries there, when you form it and you can hold the structure, they become a very potent way of um, of, of, of structuring, holding and distributing disturbing force and so I, I, I kind of view it in a way like in terms of like our work as a way of structuring consciousness it's this idea if you think of like well what is consciousness it's kind of this sub, this nebulous thing that's defined by different people in different ways and it's in a way it's you could think of it as awareness but that geometry adds structure to it and then when you add structure it adds um order which is a, a seventh ray attribute as uh, other people have mentioned in, in this call and that it allows for efficiencies to take place and obviously har harmony and rhythm being the, some of the top of those as we've, we've talked about and so i think with the groups it, it adds like a force again i'm force multiplier if you think there's this um this concept i've come across before like uh, the law of squares where they talk about each person adds that force multiplier so you're you know one person holding the geometry in their own consciousness equals one, you know, two, two times two equals four. So you automatically bump from one to four. And then say you go three, three people, three by three is nine and four by four is 16 and so on. And see, you could see there's a definite 
definite jump very quickly in that. And so I, I think the sacred, the other aspect of the sacred geometry that calls to mind is the importance of each individual innately to the group, their contribution, the attendance and the contribution, because the more individuals can come together in that group and hold their point in that group, that that's where the real efficiencies and then the, and the force multipliers come in effect. And then the plan implements much faster and to greater degree than otherwise, if you're working alone or, or even in, in smaller groups or, or even worse, disharmon disharmonious groups that you're attempting to hold the geometry, but because there's a lack of harmony, it becomes a, you know, a, a, a erratic signal, so to speak. And that then the, the light and the force gets spilled out everywhere rather than being held in, in a, in a, I guess that's another thing too. The sacred geometry is a container in that, an energetic container of sorts, and then it gets moved in in that way. So, um, thank you. Yeah, I just want to add to that um, sacred geometry. Uh, knowing the quote unquote blueprint of the different way things are built in nature, obviously, because um, to me that's looking at the blueprint that the architect was the great one, the, you know, God, um, the different ways that nature creates through the rays and that. Um, it, it brought me to think of, um, there's been problems with the 5G, those big towers going up, affecting a lot of people's health. And I think it's somewhere in Europe, but I'm not sure where. I can't remember where I read this. Um, the cows were getting sick, not producing milk, dying off the sheep, same thing in the area when they put up the 5G um, towers. And uh, people were getting very ill. Um, their animals weren't producing and they were getting ill. So there is a man, and I can't remember his name right now. He works with sacred geometry. So he designed a, a geometrical figure, you know, like a structure, whatever. I don't know the exact shape of what the geometric figure looked like. And he made um, like imp blueprints of, not blueprints of it, but I'm going to say pictures of it. And, um, and he planted them in the ground, not very deep, just a little bit around that tower. And within a week, there was tremendous change in animal behavior, animal health, the way the people were feeling. So that geometric, um, you know, that sacred geometry is is so important for us. We're, we're just touching the edge of learning about it now, but, um, you know, you form, make these formations and immediately things respond, you know, because what the devas follow, the color, the patterns, you know, they try to build what that is. And obviously it create some sort of balance and harmony with nature. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that because I thought that was really interesting when I heard about. Thank you, everyone. That helps a lot. Um, I think my only real uh, a conscious experience of it, of of that had been uh, it wasn't just background it was um, just that when I, if I <laughs> occasionally get d discouraged in what I'm doing um, it seems that all of my clocks suddenly encourage me by showing me uh, you know, I may have not checked the time for three hours and I'll look around and it'll be 3.33 and I go, oh, everything's going to be all right now. <laughs> it's just, it's happened so often and so f anymore that it just is like a little message to say, uh, quit thinking about yourself and get busy again. You know, <laughs> um, everything will be fine. And, and that has been my most direct kind of personal personal experience with the numbers. I knew they were important, but I just didn't really know, as I said, how people were using this. And I really appreciate all, all your help with it. Thank you. I'd like to think to um, Tracy's comment about the, the um, geometries using to uplift the environment and, and bring about beneficial and helpful changes to um, 
people as a result of kind of offsetting technology. The um, gentleman's name is Ibrahim Karim. I, I posted it in the chat. That's one of his books. It's the latest one, Biogeometry Signatures. But there's one, and I can't remember the other one, but there's one before that that's more of a basic text. But um, his writings, in my opinion, are brilliant. They, um, I believe it was either in Sw Sweden or Switzerland that he did it, but he talks about it in the books. And he specializes in taking the ancient Egyptian teachings of these sacred geometry symbols and then bring, putting them into either talismans or architecture or in various things. And he proves in his books and ab about how these things work, how they bring about very definite and very quick changes just by structuring. And again, this again, this is um, you can think of it as structuring consciousness in a way that these very subtle changes will bring about these effects. And, and so I think part of this, now that I think about this more as I as I talk through this, this is going to be the way the about the obstructions are going to be abolished and the, and the lights can be distributed as people see these, as people step forward and say, hey, this isn't just theoretical stuff we're talking about, you know, move this thing over there, restructure this and do a couple tweaks. And then all of a sudden people get healthier, they feel better, they're just innately harmonious where a lot of the discord and, and disagreements may be just caused by the way the architecture and nature, um, or, or not nature itself, but just artificial changes to nature, ignorantly done that that create these kind of irritations and agitation in people that aren't part of their innate being. And so when these when people come forth and do this, but these um, I'm presently reading the second book now, the bio the sign, bio geometry signatures, but the first one I, I completed and it's it's um, highly recommended if you're into that sort of stuff and and like that and it's um, it, it's kind of dense work but you know it it's one of those things you might not read it in a day or two you know you can sort of chip away at it but it's um, it's very good in my opinion complements the Bailey work and the 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 hierarchy work very very well thank you thank you John yeah uh, yes as uh uh tracy started talking about it i remember to pull out uh uh what's called a clearing plate that's uh was designed by ibrahim karim um yeah it's uh this the, it's a fascinating field of study and uh, groups who work with that uh, specifically the uh kamsa group that rebecca belongs to they work very closely with the practical use of sacred geometry, experimenting with that. What I wanted to add to that, so if what John and Tracy just said, if we try to imagine that uh, the, esoteric, the esoteric world community would find a way through in in intuitive process to arrange itself into that geometry of right uh, alignment, what effect that could have for the rest of the world service group and the rest of the world. I will just say that in some ways we are doing that when we um, align with full moon and new moon energies. Uh, certainly the planets are part of our sacred geometry and we know uh, when right timing for right alignment is, uh, what kind of energies we get through what planets. Um, so that really needs to be looked at too in terms of the whole. Uh, in some ways, right uh, sacred geometry is right relationship. I think we we can't forget also that um, when we're speaking of um, being out in the world in natural, you know, being a part of a and uh, of a whole world system that it is really helpful um, to just check with the devas to see if we're following um, the higher divine laws that they embody uh, and not stepping on their toes, not making it more difficult for them, but really being rightly aligned with um, um, natural law and God's plan as, as much as possible. They can, they're really, I think, 
if we try to listen, that they're they're very, very helpful. Recently, um, the Abraham Kareem stuff in sacred geometry, one of his students, he was the first American to be um, trained in, in Egypt by Abraham Kareem. Um, I believe his name is Dr. Robert Gilbert. And if you go on YouTube, he has a lot of material on there that um, it, it looks like his role in this is to kind of bring these teachings out into the world and so he does a lot of stuff on youtube he also offers courses through his thing i think his his um, organization is called vesica institute and um but there's a lot in there but it just came to mind as we were talking um that's a good very good way especially if there's an interest in sacred geometry he does a very kind of a range of things on there very to very basic to um more more advanced and so there's kind of something for everybody and then also he has a series on gaia um the Gaia network, the streaming service, where he walks you through the kind of the structuring of, um, of, of the tree of life, basically through that. And that, that could be done too. And that kind of, you know, as if you go through that, you'll, you'll notice definite shifts in your subtle body systems that kind of manifest in the physicality. It's, um, it, it's sort of fascinating. And then to, um, to, to Lynn's comments, it, it's fascinating. The, you know, you forget a lot of times these invisible forces helping us, you know, it's, it's easy to remember, in your meditation room and kind of, you know, calling upon these things, but then out in the world, you know, making those adjustments and, you know, two things came to mind. I was thinking, in, but they're in, in two different systems. You know, one is the, um, you know, if you, if you look at the, um, the, the prophet teaching, it's Elizabeth and Mark prophet, they have writings, um, one system of the writing of, of El Moria, where everything's qualified when you make calls to, if it's according to the divine will, then let it be done. And so that I believe would embody like a first ray or some variation of that call, just saying, we'll make, you know, I want to do this, but do it according to the divine will. And then that way you stay in alignment with the blueprint and then don't create additional karma. But then there's also in the, in the Lucille Cetocrans versions, there's, if it's a, if it's in accordance with divine law and order. And my understanding of that is that's a seventh ray attribute, um, ceremonial order and ma magic and encompasses, um, you know, the, the master are basically in that work of kind of bringing in the physicality that what's being done. So, you know, it's, it's getting in the habits of doing these things of kind of knowing, well, these, these forces are there. And then when you do things, but then making these, these tiny adjustments that'll sort of, um, it, it's been my experience that they'll, they'll cut off the rough edges of anything you're doing and then sort of off and then a, adjust. And when you have these experiences, you'll start noticing things come together very smoothly and so where something you might have had to redo 10 times before automatically comes to perfection the first time you do it because you've had this help and you've made those adjustments to the calls and then they just you know the, the projects come together um perfectly in, in that way thank you Yeah. And um, um, it's interesting to me that if um, if we take that all of the above into consideration, the basic knowledge of um, the etheric flow, like, you know, we have 10, 10 C groups, right? Each one of them works through certain centers. So if we know that and if we invoke the energy and align those centers of the group when we work, then the um, connection is becoming more precise. And if you think about 10 seed groups as, you know, humanity is actually etheric centers themselves, um, then again, the understanding the energy of the rays and the combination of the rays and uh, centers becoming again more precise. And when you when we use that geometry, 
then um, the that help of the great ones that we invoke comes in again more precisely. It's the same way when we formulate a request, like it was, you know, and then we add to the point that this is the best of our understanding and we ask to adjust whatever it is not aligned with the divine intention or not proper right now at the moment. Uh, because it disturbs some balance that we don't understand, and it's an evolutionary balance. That's um, also a good thing to have the end, you know, and the end of our invocation. This request to be um, not even corrected, fine tuned fine-tuned according to a greater perspective that we don't with that we don't have at the moment and um yeah thank you One more thing I wanted to add, even though time now it's already for us to go to meditation, uh, to somehow summarize our conversation about sacred geometry. At the end of the day, as I understand it, it's all about the energy flow. So it's not sacred geometry just for the sake of geometry. It's to streamline the lines of energy flow and thus create certain effect. So when we talk about its geometrical alignment of the groups and within the community, it's about the and certain energy flow for certain purpose. Mm. So let us hold all this rich sharing, all these different aspects of our topic in our group chalice. Reflecting on the most resonant ideas, preparing to offer them into our group altar, group chalice. And Judy, when you're ready, please lead us in meditation. Thank you, Alexander. So let us breathe together in conscious coordinated rhythm. And we align with our soul. And the soul of our group. And we hold the awareness that we are part of the new group of world servers. And that we have committed ourselves to work together for the common good. standing poised between hierarchy and humanity as love breathing. Feel our unity.
and our etheric oneness. Let us take our place as ashramic workers within hierarchy. and offer ourselves as one radiant heart center to the work of seeding the plan. Today we begin our reflection on the energy of Aquarius as we prepare to send our thought forms during this new moon time. We read in esoteric astrology that the fixed cross on which we find Aquarius is the cross of light and of playing through this cross all the time are the fires of God, cosmic, solar, and planetary producing purification, the intensification of light, and eventually revelation to the purified man who stands in the light. After a long time on this cross, in Leo, the lion of self-assertion, of one's experience becomes the light of the soul. And in Aquarius, the chalice of service becomes the light of the world. Let us hold these two lights, the light of soul and the light of the world. We also read that the intensive self-consciousness of Leo expands into the group awareness of Aquarius. The individual becomes the universal. Man alone and separative becomes mankind in his reaction and awareness. Yet at the same time, he preserves his individuality. He is no longer a human being individually self-centered and separative, but becomes humanity itself, losing his personal identity in the good of the whole, yet retaining his spiritual identity. The material, earthly quality of Capricorn becomes dissolved into the air in Aquarius. Regarding the rulers of Aquarius, we are told that Uranus gives innate spontaneous activity, and this produces evolutionary development, both natural and spiritual. It is the urge to better condition. Jupiter gives us inherent tendency to fuse, which nothing can arrest. And the moon brings about the inclination to create these conditions, which leads to a greater critical transformation of instinct to intellect. But Uranus veiled by the new moon causes the great transference in the human con con consciousness from intellectual perception to intuitive knowledge. Let us harness and use these energies today.
In telepathy in the etheric uh, vehicle, it states, the entire evolutionary history of our planet is one of reception and of distribution, of a taking in and a giving out. The key to humanity's troubles has been to take and not to give, to accept and not to share, to grasp and not to distribute. This is a breaking of the law, which has placed humanity in the position of guilt. The war is the dire penalty which humanity has had to pay for this great sin of separateness. Impression from the hierarchy has been received, distorted, misapplied, and misinterpreted. And the task of the new group of world servers is to offset this evil. These servers are to humanity what the Buddhas of activity are to Shambhala. And the group of divine contemplatives, the Namanakayas, are to the hierarchy. It might be stated, therefore, that one, the Buddhas of activity are themselves impressed by the will of God as it energizes the entire planetary life. Two, the Namanakayas are impressed by the love of God as it demonstrates itself as the attractive force which impulses the plan inspired by purpose. And three, it is the new group of world servers who are impressed by the active intelligence of God. They translate this divine impression and step it down in two great stages, bringing it to concrete manifestation. This is our work to translate divine impression. So let us first send out a collective light to break through what Master DK called the great sin of separateness to and through the center, which we call the race of men. So let us stand together. And connect to this light. and break up the thought form of the idea of separateness. And now let's take several minutes to contemplate the seeds waiting to fill our chalice based on the topic, Aquarian World Group, sharing on all levels aligned with the plan. In our work, we have attempted to reach the plane of intuition to bring through the thought forms and seeds that we will offer to humanity. So let us stand together at this level of booty and open our minds to the light of intuition where the plan is held. Let us take several minutes. And if you'd like, please write down your impressions.
And now with Aquarius supporting us as world servers, let us pour forth the waters of life into our chalice. So when you are ready, please unmute yourself to share. I'll offer the following seed thought, elevating humanity through sacred geometry, harmony, and rhythm. Banish fear and doubt, foster cooperation and harmony. Share. Let us share. Sharing justice and peace. Let us share joyful love into the wholeness of the one life. Receiving and expressing Buddhic light and energy on all levels with all beings. We are a wondrous whole, a center of life in process of remembering. Let the world group organize in geometrical order, forming channels to receive and distribute rivers of life and love to humanity. Loving understanding between nations. Through impression, we direct the light of the plan to all leaders, all peoples, and all kingdoms in nature. And may the energy of Aquarius support those endeavors and aspirations within one year cycle, nine year cycle, 
in 27 year cycle. In reaching our service. I, as triangle divine, work out God's will within the square and serve my fellow men. May each part recognize each part and share so obstructions be dissolved. If there are any other seeds, please share now. With those seeds that we have shared and those that we held in our hearts, let the group borders of our collective impression now pour forth to the deva of humanity and to its personality through the five planetary centers. See this light move through New York. London, Geneva, Darjeeling, and Tokyo. The five-pointed star of humanity. And let us seal our work with the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of humanity. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and love. 
from the center which we call the race, a law. Let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, everyone.